think it was when uh, Louis Silas Jr., who was uh, the VP of MCA Records, came down, um, and he, he, he would come down with several acts um, during the time I was on Soul Train, during the eight months that I was on Soul Train. And, um, and he's, he came to me and he was like, when the cameras are off, you, di you dance differently. Where'd you learn to do that? And I said, well, from New York, I'm from Brooklyn. And he said, wow, could you teach uh, this artist I have coming out? Do you know who Bobby Brown is? He's leaving New Edition. Um, and I'll teach, you know, I'll pay you to teach him how to dance like you. But I didn't say, oh, uh, you know, I'm, thank goodness I was on Soul Train because now I can be a choreographer. A choreographer, I was a college student. You know what I mean? That thought never even entered my head. Only when he brought money into the conversation, I was like, okay, I'm a choreographer. And I did it so I could pay for my living expenses and my college books and, 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 and that. It wasn't, sorry, but really, you know, and that's, you know, I think that's why I was always just so much of a burst of energy uh, whenever a camera came to me because I was just enjoying it. I was in the moment. There was no other uh, preconceived notions or preconceived ideas of what I could get out of the experience. I was just experiencing the experience for what it was, and that's it. Well, the character was initially Cheryl, and she was supposed to be African-American. And then when Spike Lee met me, he said that I had inspired him to change her. Um, and um, he said it was a good idea because the majority of the characters in, the, uh, in his original script were African-American. And when he met me, he said it expanded his thought outside of that. And, you know, make it a real community, real complex, because he had the African-American, and then he had the Korean, but that, you know, the African-Americans were the only ones living on that block, which is a fallacy in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. That, was, that, that experience was also uh, in tune with the prior experiences that I first said, no, I'm not an actress, and he said, oh, honey, yes, you are. <laughs> Drama queen. And um, so then he, I was like, oh, no, no. And, um, and then he finally convinced me, and when I auditioned, I got it, and I went right back to college after shooting it, because it was shot in the summertime. Then when I went, out, went back to college, and that's when everything started to click, because it was the first time in my life I couldn't concentrate on my dream of becoming a world famous marine biologist and scientist. And all of a sudden, everything just like whoosh, and everything turned. And it was like um, your first love, your first crush that you remember like from first grade or something. You never forget that person because it was such a new experience. It was such a new, powerful emotion hitting you. That was what happened after do the right thing. Not during, because I was just in the moment of it. It was the after effect, the afterthought. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do this for the rest of my life. When you walk into a room, a casting room, and all the faces are white, literally, there's not one black, brown, yellow face in the room but yours and they're all A-listers, that makes you shake. It makes you shake and it makes you quiver. And it makes you very aware of the color of your skin, whether you want to admit it or not. And that's what it did to me. And I got sick and tired of that feeling. And I took all of that feeling and just, tch, yeah. I am entitled to be in this room. I am entitled to have a shot at this role, as same as you. And I really think that that's what brought me success. I really think that the audacity that was in me, I guess it came from my ancestry with the Taino Indians, we were very proud people, you know. I was like, what? 
What do you mean you didn't set a place for me at a table? Well, come on, get the silverware. Where's my napkin? Okay, yeah, mm, move, please. Thank you. I'm sitting at this table. What? Got to put a place for me. What are you crazy? Uh-uh. And I really think, and I and I found enjoyment in that. I found enjoyment of beating so-and-so out of a role. And it had nothing to do with the fact that I was Puerto Rican. And it had everything to do with the fact that I was Puerto Rican. You understand? It's made me produce my own films. It's made me venture out into the theater world. You know, it's made me want to be even a better actress to say, yeah, okay, you want to shut me out over here, but look at I'm good and you know it. I'm good and I'm getting better. You know, it's a double-edged sword.